Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and you're here for another Sunday sew along. So last week we finished up the Vogue 1650 trench coat. Love that pattern so much. I love that coat so much. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Um, so now I usually do a tutorial in between sew alongs. I'm actually going to do two weeks of tutorials, mostly because we go into the Monty shirt dress next from Style Arc, and while I have filmed all of that, I need footage of my sister in it, <laughs> and I'm going to see her um, um, on July or June 5th. So I am. Um, gonna wait and get footage of her actually in it so that I can, I'm gonna start putting footage of the actual garment in the first video of the sew along so you can kind of even see if it's something that you might be interested in trying. Um, instead, and then put it at the end too, but instead of just waiting until the end. So um, anyway, we're gonna do two weeks of tutorials and this week I'm gonna be showing you how I made the Concord t-shirt into a knit dress. Now um, this would work on any t-shirt pattern, you know, your favorite t-shirt pattern. The Concord has definitely become my favorite t-shirt pattern. It just fits my chest, my shoulders, everything so well. She has three different uh, neckline options and I even traced off a boat neck option from a different pattern. So I've got all that. There's three different sleeve lengths. You could do a cuff. You cannot do a cuff. Um, it comes, you know, multiple lengths. Um, there's a cute tab you can sew for like that rolled up look. Uh, anyway, love that t-shirt pattern. And I had been looking for a knit dress pattern for a really long time. I didn't want anything bodycon, which that's, you know, pretty easy to find in patterns, just like the real fitted, like a straight skirt knit dress. Um, didn't want anything like that, but I also didn't want, um, anything that just like a, a tent dress or a trapeze dress that was like super loose because that has a tendency just to hang off my boobs and make me look bigger than I am, um, even with drapier knits. So I was looking for something that was fitted in the in the top, but then was a little more A-line for the bottom. Now, uh, Tilly in the Buttons does have the cocoa dress, which was kind of what I was thinking, but uh, that really needs, it has enough of an A-line, it really needs a thicker knit, like a ponty knit or a double knit or an interlock or something along those lines. And I wanted something that I could make in like a t-shirt knit, like just a regular cotton spandex. Um, yeah, so that was like the holy grail. <laughs> of knit dresses. So finally I just decided I love this Concord like I'm just gonna hack it into a dress and it turned out perfectly. So today I'm gonna be showing you how I did that and actually just going ahead and I when I made my dress um, and I'll pop some footage here of me in it and also pop some at the end as well same footage um, but I didn't make a pattern for it. I just kind of laid the t-shirt pattern on and drew out the skirt <laughs> um, front with chalk from the the fabric but I love it so much that I decided I do want it as an actual paper pattern just stick it in with the rest of my Concord pieces and then that'll be an option um, and I wanted to give myself all of the neckline options as well with the dress so I traced all that off so that's what I'm showing you today going ahead and making a paper pattern for myself for the Concord knit dress and uh, yeah showing you guys how I hacked that but again this will work for any pattern all right, guys, that's all I have for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below and I'll answer those as soon as possible. Have a good one. Bye. Okay, let's turn this Concord into a dress. <laughs> all right, so with the Concord um, by Cashmere, I've already traced off my front and my back uh, for this pattern. And actually I went ahead and made um, if you've watched the channel at all, uh, the actual pattern just has one back piece with only one neckline, but I have traced a separate neckline also for a boat neck um, so that this t-shirt pattern can honestly become my ultimate t-shirt. But I do have all of the different um, hem links that are marked on the pattern. I have the lengthen and shorten end line um, marked, uh, the cropped length, the mid length, and obviously I've got it cut here at the long length. Now I have made... Um, my pattern is a size 10 and I do grade out to a 12 at the waist and then back to a 10 at the hip. So this is not as curvy as the regular pattern, but a 10 is actually even a little big for my hips. Um, I'm just have, I just have narrow hips. Um, so this technique works really great for that. But remember the long length on this shirt is meant to um, cover the hip line of that size with some ease. So even, we're basically just elongating the dress. Now I am going to be extending, you know, the line out a little bit, which will give you a little bit more swing. But I find that this is, um, it makes a knit dress that is not bodycon, which I don't want. And it also isn't um, 
like a, a trapeze dress where there's just too much ease because I find that those just hang off my boobs unflatteringly because I have, you know, a large chest. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, make a pattern for a dress with you guys. So first I'm going to just um, draw my line in. Now this is for the dress and I'm going to actually mark all of the neckline in, neck lines in. I'm just tracing the shirt pattern to a certain point. And what I'm going to do, if you guys don't have a tracing wheel in your repertoire, you need one. It comes in so handy. So I'm just going to trace this second one and then I'll be able to trace it in pen um, once I lift this up. But I'm just tracing my armhole, this t-shirt pattern. I'm going to mark here so I know that's where one of my notches are and I'll mark that on the inside of the pattern when I've lifted this up. But I'm just going to go through making sure that I'm marking. I'm not going to worry about the hem lengths, obviously, because this is a um, dress. So there's one hem length on this pad on this actual pattern piece. Okay. On the cashmere pattern, this actually indicates the waist, this notch here, which makes it really easy. So I have measured from my waist down as to what I um, want the length of my dress to be. And from my waist to right at the top of my knee, which is where I want the length to hit on me, I know that I need to add, I want it to be 20 inches. I am going to add 21 inches from the waist because I want an inch for the hem. So I'm going to be adding 21 inches. Now I can go... I'm just gonna go straight down. I've got this, of course, laid, because um, this gets cut on the fold. So I've got this laid down here. So I'm just gonna go, I actually, I have a grid under here, but you can, if you want, just mark straight across, perpendicular to the, I'll go ahead and do that. Since a lot of you probably don't have grids. So what I'm going to do is, this is my waist right here. So I'm just gonna go straight across the pattern, right at that waist notch. That's the waistline on the pattern. All right, so from that waistline, I'm going to take this yardstick and I'm going to measure down 21 inches from the waist, which is right there. Okay, so now I'm actually going to just make all the way across my paper perpendicular to the fold, which I'm not laying on my grid. Um, straight, so this is going to fool the eye a little bit, trusting my ruler. But I'm just going to go straight across. I'm just going to go all the way across the paper. So that is where I want my new hemline to be. Also pointing out that I have my um, pattern pushed down with weights. All right, so this purple line is my new hem length. So now all I'm going to do is go, I'm going to move these out of the way, from the waist, and I'm just going to kind of follow the line of the hip here a little bit. But I just want it to be straight, and that's actually even past the hip of the pattern, which is fine. I don't mind a little extra room at the hip. And there we go. Okay. So now I can remove, this is the back, actually I'm going to make a little mark there. That'll be a nice notch, that's the hip notch there, but we'll mark that on the pattern just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to remove the shirt pattern. That was a little bit right on that pattern, but I can connect that. All right, we're going to make our notches where I marked them on the exterior of the pattern, and I'm gonna trace in my other neckline, right boot neck. Then we can write back, one on fold, concord dress. Um, this is a size 10, 12. So I've got a 10 GH at the top, graded to a 12 at the waist because she drafts for a very curvy um, body. 
Um, so I've gone to the 12 at the waist and then back to the 10 at the hip. Technically, I probably should go to an 8 at the hip, but that'll be okay. All right, so there's our back. So what I'm going to do now is really quickly cut this out because it'll be helpful to have um, this line. Okay, I've thought of one other thing I want to do here real quick. All right, if you've noticed any time, um, sorry, loud. Anytime you make a dress that has a little bit of an A-line shape, typically the, um, I mean, if it's a straight skirt, you've got a straight hem. But a lot of times you'll have a slight curve to the hem, which, you know, the, obviously the fuller the skirt, um, the more it curves, you know, because you're going around and you want the same um, line. So I'm actually going to do that to this one. And look, that's exactly what I kind of thought. So if I mark, so here's my waist notch here. If I measure down the side seam, 21 inches, because that's what we added. I'm right here at this point. So I want to shave that, whatever that is, three quarters of an inch off probably. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could mark your, if you want to get really fancy, you can mark your line straight across at your waist. And then just kind of go, you know, 21, 21, 21, 21. A little less than that. Okay. So it's just a slight curb that you're adding there at the bottom. And then... There we go. So there we go. It just curves up just ever so slightly. You're not cutting really that much off. All right, so there's our back piece. So I'm going to set it aside here for a minute. And now we are going to do our front. Fresh piece of paper. All right, now this lays the other way, so I'm actually gonna be going at this the other way. Okie dokie. So we're just gonna set this up here, line up my front. Just put some marks here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to trace from this waist notch, making sure you remember to mark those all important notches. And again, I want to mark all my various necklines. I actually cut at the high neck. In the boat. The boat goes a little wider. So I will just go. It's hard to do this around <laughs> the tripod. Okay. 
Now we can mark in that waistline again. We're just going straight across. yourself a reference point okay so now I'm going to move those for a second and I'm going to mark down from the top 21 inches I need to have that this way <laughs> okay 21 all right so there's my 21 inch mark here at the bottom of the paper. I'm just gonna go, I'm off, I'm not laying straight on this grid again, so that's gonna get real confusing. Okay, so there's our hemline. So now we are gonna go again, just right at waist and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark my line in kind of arbitrarily there okay now I'm gonna move it but now we are going to true it to mark that notch to the other, to the back, basically. So I'm gonna move this. Actually, just gonna really quickly mark in my necklines. There's the boat neckline. There's the V. And there's the scoop. So we'll just write three neck, scoop, thigh neck, and this is boat neck. <laughs> okay, so let's move this really quickly. Smudge that a bit. Oh, I didn't mark my hip line. Well, we'll do that with the back. Okay, so I'm just gonna mark these notches as a very important notches. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is lay my back here <clears throat> on top of my front. Don't worry about matching anything up here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm matching my waist notches and I want this to be so I want it to be the, an equal distance away from the um, the line here which is about, I don't know, quarter of an inch probably. So now what I can do is I can true this. So I didn't come out enough on this. So I'm just gonna redraw this line. There's my notch, mark that, oh, mark that. We'll mark it inside here in a second. Boop, 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 boop. And then the same with the hem. So we've got the same, there we go. Okay. So now here is my front. So we can write Concord front, Concord dress, size 10, 12, fold, one on fold. Okay. And now we can cut this out. And now we have um, a dress pattern. I'm just gonna cut it up here at the high neck because everything else is inside that. And like I had mentioned, this literally is my, the perfect t-shirt dress for my figure, um, for my wants, desires, whatever. <laughs> this is the perfect one for me. So hopefully 
if you guys were having as big of an issue. Oops, almost cut off my notch. Like that on the inside. If you guys are having as big of an issue finding a t-shirt dress that you like, hopefully you can do this with your favorite t-shirt pattern. Alrighty, there we go, guys. That is how I hacked my Concord t-shirt into a dress.